Compared to the other accidents we have been investigating in this series, this one may seem rather benign. However, there is a reason it is included. While there were no injuries or fatalities in this accident, the plane was seriously damaged. It is what caused this accident that is very important to consider. Listen closely as the pilot explains what happened on the day he damaged his Piper Vagabond. It was a nice day. Went flew to uh, Richmond and Williamstown and then down to Oneida Lake. I decided to get fuel at Oswego Fulton Airport. On my way, I checked with AWOS. The winds were at 310 degrees. The wind speed, I'm thinking it was about six. On my way over, I heard a pilot using runway 24. On my way over, I called in. I was five miles east of the airport entering the pattern. Checked on the windsock, which was favoring 24. I called in. I was downwind for runway 24. Gave a base leg, then final for 24. My right wing was down upon landing. The crosswind changed, causing the plane to ground loop, and in which I had no time to correct. Upon ground looping, when I got out of the plane, I could see the windsock was pointing right at uh, 310, which would have favored runway 33, I believe it is. I was in a, a Piper Vagabond tailwheel, and it's a PA-15. Never had a problem landing this aircraft. Uh, just before I touched, the the tail went went around on me a little bit, just enough to get the momentum. I didn't expect it to do a, a ground loop at all. I checked my logbook, and prior to that, I hadn't been in the plane for 90 days. On hindsight, I probably should have landed on the turf. They have turf over there, and being I hadn't been in the plane that much, that could have been part of the problem, too. As the late Paul Harvey used to say, here is the rest of the story. A little over an hour before Ray's accident, another pilot lost control of a Cessna 172 and ran off the runway as a result of the same reason, shifting winds. Since the winds were reportedly very manageable, almost good flying conditions, the accidents are surprising. In these cases, it wasn't necessarily the strength of the wind that contributed to the accidents. It was the fact these winds were aggressively shifting. This leads us to some lessons learned. First, we have to remember that weather, including winds, can change very quickly. It is wise aviating to always be on the lookout for even subtle changes. It is possible to detect these changes by staying updated on weather conditions during the flight. This includes utilizing any AWOS ASOS reports along the way and at your destination airports. However, it is important to keep in mind these automated weather stations do have limitations. One is the fact the station is only able to assess the conditions where the sensors are located. They cannot look off in the distance or even the other side of the airport and determine different or changing conditions. In the case of Ray's accident, he did listen to a cycle of the AWOS to determine the current conditions. Based on Ray's experience, it could be wise to listen to more than one cycle of the AWOS ASOS broadcast to see if a change had taken place. Perhaps a listen about 10 miles out, followed by another listen just prior to entering the pattern, could catch shifting winds and other changes. When it comes to dependable information on what winds are doing at the airport, it's hard to beat the trusty windsock. In Ray's accident, he did note he looked at the windsock upon entering the pattern, but then focused on landing without referring to it again. He did not notice the windsock had shifted to favoring another runway until after he had ground looped and glanced at the windsock upon exiting the plane. Another lesson learned from investigating this accident is confirmation of an old saying in aviation. 
to fly it all the way to the hangar. Always be expecting changes on approaching and landing. Bob Hoover made the same point when he said, you want to fly the airplane as far into the crash as possible. Is there anything that could have perhaps prevented Ray's accident? What if the pilot in the Cessna 172, after experiencing his own accident upon encountering the rapidly shifting winds, had decided to contact ATC or flight service to file a PIREP? PIREPs are very important. They provide pilots with real-life weather reports from fellow aviators who had experienced the actual conditions rather than the educated guesses of weather forecasting. The NTSB has issued a safety alert on the importance of PIREPs. You can access that alert by googling NTSB Safety Report PIREPs. AOPA also has a program on giving good, efficient PIREPs. More on that later in this series. In the next segment, we will investigate a tragic accident that occurred in Florida that claimed the life of a CFI, who was also a naval aviator, as well as his 18-year-old cousin.